Hey everyone, hope you're all having an awesome day. Good to be back here. My name is Dan Taylor. For anyone new, I run DanThePixarFan.com, and today I'm taking a detailed look at the brand new plasma drill vehicle as part of Mattel's seemingly never-ending collection of 5-inch scale Lightyear action figures. Keep them coming, Mattel. I cannot get enough. I am all in with this line. It's been so fun to collect over the last several months, not only because the toys themselves are a lot of fun, but it's also just been super fun and exciting how much and how often Mattel is pumping out new releases and new reveals. I can hardly keep up. Up, and I love that it keeps me on my toes, really bringing back the thrill of the hunt that I felt as a kid when collecting action figures back in the day. Now, I know I've talked about this multiple times here before, but Mattel's Lightyear range totally feels like a nostalgic, very 80s, 90s-esque, old-school toy line to me, back when toy companies used to go all out with a new release. Like, here within the 5-inch scale line, for example. With most figure lines these days, I feel like you just get a few main characters, and then maybe a vehicle, and that's it. But not here. Here in this 5-inch scale line, we've not only gotten the film's main characters, as expected, of course, but then there's so many different character variants, some side characters, creatures, and vehicles, a big playset is on its way, um, and it's not all the obvious choices either. We've gotten some really cool, unexpected world building releases like this plasma drill vehicle here, which by the way really solidifies what I've been saying that nothing seems off the table when it comes to who or what could show up in this line. I mean, when this line first started back in the spring, I never would have guessed that we would get such an obscure vehicle that really only has a few moments of screen time in the film. Maybe I would have back in the 90s, but not these days. But yeah, I'm all for it, and I love when toy lines get bold, branch out a little, and release some outside-of-the-box choices, which is something Mattel has done a few times here with this line. Okay, now as far as the packaging, nothing too unique here to touch on. It's got the same look, same design elements as the rest of the line, which has always looked really good. I do like the open blister style card here once again. It makes for a pretty cool inbox presentation. On this side here, it does show the contents. And on the back here, you know the drill, pun intended. We have some cool shots of the drill and feature callouts as usual, like a launching missile. And then we have a look at its articulation slash extending capability. And then also something I wasn't expecting, it's cross compatibility with the base utility truck. You can take the laser trencher from that vehicle and connect it to the drill, and take the launcher from the drill and connect it to the truck. Very cool. Anyway, it also shows the six original single-pack 5-inch figures that were included in the very first wave. Pretty typical. Then here's underneath the box for anyone looking for this info, and lastly, it does show here that there's just one piece to assemble, so let's get right to unboxing this sucker, get that piece connected, and see how well this thing works, shall we? Okay, now that the drill is out of the box, let's just get this little antenna piece or whatever it is on. Perfect, just snaps right into place, and there we go. Quick and simple assembly, everything else is good to go right out of the box, and check it out guys, this looks pretty awesome. Such a cool piece to add into your Lightyear 5-inch scale figure display if you're a collector. Kids, of course, will love this too. Lots of play value here. Either way, I just love how scene-specific it is so that you can perfectly recreate the moment Darby helps Buzz by shooting down Zerg with this. Of course, we still need that upcoming Space Ranger suit Darby figure to get the moment exact here in toy form, but hey, at least she's coming soon, so that's very exciting. Now, I was just comparing this vehicle to the drill that we see in the film, and I'm incredibly impressed with just how screen accurate this is. It looks real close to being an exact match, so well done, Mattel. All the sculpted details here are more or less totally spot on. The size and proportions seem super accurate for a toy, and then the printed details and colors look really decent. You know, obviously there's no weathering here, and paint ops are minimal to none like always, but I mean, there are plenty of printed details from the film, like how it says plasma drilling unit, we got the big 13 there on the side, Sides, the hazard stripes are mostly all here, and so on. Really, the only major detail I see missing is the word caution on the front, and then I also wanted to note that the little SC or Star Command mining logo on the upper sides of the toy doesn't actually seem to appear in the film. So yeah, that's just been added here for the toy version, but man, other than that, this ultimately comes real close to looking pretty much perfect. I will say this thing is definitely a fantastic candidate for a nice custom black wash to weather this up, so I can see a lot of customizers out there having a real field day with this one. As far as the movable joints, all three legs can swivel out and can be moved side to side like this. And then the center arm can rotate 360 as well as extend up like this and can be posed in different positions. And these are ratchet joints here in the middle, by the way, which I appreciate. Those are totally needed here to prevent too much sagging since this thing is pretty top heavy and there's already a little bit of sagging going on. Now, as far as getting this all the way extended, I can't even fit it all in the frame here. So let's move to a wider shot real quick. There we go. And for anyone wondering what the height measurement is, it looks like it's right around 13 and a half inches tall from the table to the top of the antenna there. 
Yeah, I will say things are a bit more loose than I expected. The ratchet joints do help for sure, but it's just a tiny bit disappointing to see how kind of wobbly things are in the middle there. It's not terrible. You can get it into stable positions, as you can see. I just personally would have liked to see things a little tighter here. Anyway, moving on, the other bit of posability that this has is you can swing out the two chair handles like this, and they can even rotate 360 like this. It's a nice, subtle touch for sure. And here's a closer look at the little molded control screen in there. And the handle, of course, on this side has the same movement. It can swing out and then rotate all the way around. And now this is pretty cool. This top covering can pop off like so. Here it is. And the reason being is then you're able to remove the gun piece like this. It just pops off easily, as you can see. And here's a closer look at the gun piece itself. And then, hmm, it looks like you can attach it under here as well. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Okay, so this doesn't really fit down here. You can attach it, but it has to be at an angle. But it's not really meant for under here. What this spot under here is really meant for, like we saw on the packaging, is the laser trencher piece that comes with the base utility vehicle. So that's actually pretty neat. Check it out. And like I said before, I had no idea that this piece here was gonna be cross compatible with the drill until I received this. So that was a somewhat pleasant surprise. But I mean, honestly, I could kind of take or leave this feature. It doesn't really do too much for me personally, but kids will like the mix and match aspect during play, I'm sure. Speaking of mixing and matching, and as I touched on earlier, just like how the laser trencher from the base utility truck can be snapped onto the drill, the gun from the drill can be mounted on the back of the base utility truck, just like this. Now, this switch I'm a little bit more on board with. I'll admit it's visually pretty cool looking to have a gun mounted back here, and man, you can't go wrong with adding a firing missile feature like this to really any vehicle. Okay, now let's get the gun and the covering back on the drill, get things back to normal, looking good. And while we're still kind of on the firing missile topic, let's go ahead and see how it works on the drill here. Here's one of the red missiles it comes with. It actually comes with two, so that's nice to have an extra, even though it can only fire one at a time. And the launching projectile just gets loaded in here as expected, like this. And then you press the button on the top here to fire, and boom! And one more time, let's slow things down though. Also, something interesting is that the covering has these two little holes here on either side to put one or both of the projectiles into when not in use, but they don't launch from there at all. The holes are literally just meant for storing the missiles, and that's it. I didn't really get the point of this at first, but it is kind of nice to have a place to put the extra missile instead of it floating around, and if anything, it makes for a fun and quick way to reload things during play. And lastly, of course, I had to show Buzz sitting here in the seat, and he fits great. No problem whatsoever getting him in there, and he can hold both of the handles that are out in front of him like this, which looks cool. I'm glad that he can actually hold on realistically like that. And then he can also hold on to the handles out to the side like this, which makes for kind of a sweet look as well. Of course, I'm going to put Darby in as well, since that's who actually uses this in the film after all. Don't worry, she'll be in my final shots. But I'm just more excited to get the Space Ranger suit version of Darby in here rather than the Junior Zap Patrol version. Okay guys, now to wrap things up, here's the drill with some of the other characters in this collection for a size comparison. We got Zerg, Buzz, and Darby there. It's a very decent sized toy, as you can tell, and it's just a really fun addition to the lineup. I think anyone who's been a fan of this line so far will want to snag this, especially collectors of any age who appreciate the kind of off to the side, off the beaten path world building releases like I do, but I understand something like this might not be for everyone. I could totally see some casual collectors passing on it since it is so obscure. It might just not be considered a must have but I totally recommend it if you're thinking about it. Maybe you're on the fence, and if you are, hopefully this review helps you out. It was a total must-have for me, no doubt, and I'm so happy to have it in my collection, no regrets. I cannot wait to see what else Mattel has up their sleeve for this line down the road. Now, for anyone out there who is looking to purchase this, you can get it currently on Amazon. I'm not sure if it's coming to stores, but yeah, it is there online right now for $21.99. That's where I got mine, and I'll have a link waiting for you down in the description. As always, I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say, so let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe for more Pixar toy news, reviews, and toy hunts. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you all in my next video.